Well, hey everyone, I am so happy to be with you. I hope that this video finds you and your family healthy and doing well. This has been a really long time coming, but I am so thrilled to finally, officially, be able to welcome you into this Disciples Communion process. We're so glad that you've been patient and that you have hung in there and that you are ready to jump into this process. We're excited for our friends who are watching this who are going to be preparing to come to the Lord's table for the first time to take communion with your family and your church family all together whenever that day can officially be. Um, it, it's such an exciting thing. We're so excited to be walking through this journey with you. This is what a, a pastor that I used to work with used to call one of those high five moments, one of those, you know, milestone moments in our faith journey. And we're so excited for you to be going through this. And we're excited for you too, parents, because this really is a, a wonderful way to, to make some time to be together as a family, to study God's word, and to have some great conversations. I know that my wife and I had the privilege of walking through this process with our boys last year. And once we finally got everyone to sit still in one place long enough, and yes, that includes the parents too, my wife and myself, it was really a lot of fun. And we had some great conversations talking about the first time that I came to the table and my wife came to the table and, and had some great questions together that we were able to kind of dig in and, and find the answers to. So we pray that this is going to be a really fruitful process for your families and that you're going to enjoy it. That's just as important as the answers that you're going to be writing on the lines in your packets. And speaking of packets, we know that by now you all have received your official packets and along with them, we wanted to make sure that you all had your very own study Bible. And friends, this is something that we're gonna, we're gonna celebrate in worship also when we can all be together again. The, the kind of giving of these Bibles to you all, we wanna kind of dedicate them in worship uh, when the time is right. But in the meantime, we wanted you to have this because it's gonna be a help to you, not only in this process, but in your lives. I don't know if you can see or not, this is my study Bible, and it was given to me by my pastor, uh, my childhood pastor, when I was just a little older than you all. And you might be able to see that that my Bible is really kind of a little bit beat up. There are markings and writings and um you know that's kind of our hope for you we hope that you will make this your own this is god's living word to you and the more that we study it and spend time in his word we're going to learn more about him and we're going to learn more about ourselves in the way that he calls us to live and one of my favorite passages talks about that and that that comes from psalm 119 and it's verse 105, and this is what it says. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And that's our prayer for you, friends, that not just as you use this to help you find the answers to the questions in the packet, but as you read God's very word to you, we pray that it's gonna light your way, that it's gonna help you in tough situations, that it's gonna show you through the life of Jesus how God wants us to live just by the way that Jesus walked. And, and we just pray that this Bible is going to bless you for many years to come until you move on to your next Bible. And so that's our prayer for you. Well, the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to turn this over to Miss Jane. Jane Cott, one of our, obviously, uh, church school leaders and one of our Children's Commission members. And she's going to walk you step by step through the packet, and I'm going to touch base with you at the end. All right, I'll see you in just a bit. Take it away, Ms. Jane. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad that I've got a chance to meet with you, even though it's by, uh, it's by video. Um, we're home. Uh, I'm home, just like you guys are. And uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about the uh, Disciples Communion booklet that you have received. I'm so glad that you've decided to sign up and, and take part in Disciples Communion. It's an important step in your faith walk. And we are glad to walk it with you with this little booklet and to help your parents and you navigate 
through the booklet so that you feel like you're prepared and ready to take communion with your family, um, either at home or when we all get, we get back together again. Um, this booklet is probably a little scary. You probably took a look at it and said, ow, 14 pages. I, I can't do that. Oh no. But let's, let's dial it down a little bit and take a look. Um, happily for the children involved, you don't have to worry about the first page at all. The first page is totally for mom and dad, to, mom or dad, or whomever's in charge of you to fill in and just leave it right here on the booklet and let it be nice and safe. No problem at all there. And the second page is really for moms and dads as well. Uh, the second page is a questions for you to ask and reflect about um, how, knowing that your child is ready for this step. Uh, you might want to look at some of these questions and think about them and ask yourself if your child seems to be ready for this step of faith. Um, are they emotionally ready and ready and, and willing to go on with it? And so that's for you to, to take a look at as well. In, you want to remember too, at any time in this process, if you feel like this isn't the right time for your family and your child to do this, it's okay. Uh, taking home the booklet is certainly not committing to absolutely having to get this done. Um, if you feel the time is not right, not a problem at all. Just give Mr. Michael a call and it's just not a deal. It'll be, it'll be around next year too. Um, you finally get into a little bit more of the work involved on the next few pages. From pages two, three, four, and five, two, three, four, and five look like reading to do, and that's what they are. They're pages to read with your families together, moms and dads, along with the, the Disciples Communion student, to read through and learn a little bit about what, it, what communion means to um, us as Presbyterians. Uh, if you were grown, if your parents grew up in a different tradition, communion might mean a little different to you. But uh, if you're Presbyterian, here's a few pages to tell you a little bit about what it means to take communion in the Presbyterian Church. There's also things in here about what communion means in general as Christians. It's actually pretty interesting stuff. And it might come in handy, uh, especially for you grown-ups, to reach out to extended family members with this. Sometimes when a grandmother or grandfather asks, well, why is communion now when your, grand, your ch grandchild is fifth grade or fourth grade? It should have been done two, three years ago. Well, this gives you some answers to those questions and what communion means as a Presbyterian. You'll find, boys and girls, that the material in here will help you answer questions further on into the booklet. The next pages, pages six and seven, are sure to strike fear into the hearts of all the mommies and daddies um, who were raised with a, a catechism in their background. This is a little copy of some of the parts of the Presbyterian Catechism for Children. Relax, you don't have to memorize anything. So there's good news right there. And it's very straightforward and very simply written and answers a lot of questions about who we are as children of God. I found it interesting, straightforward, and easy to understand. And again, this gives the children some material to use to help them with the next questions. Isn't it a good thing that they don't have to be memorized though, I gotta say. This whole packet, the whole thing actually, has been put together in order for you to walk through this with your child. So parents, we, we kind of hope that you will sit with your children and read through these pages and talk about them together and then provide help as they get to the second part. Here you finally have to step up to the plate, boys and girls, and, and put some work out here. This is a little section here. It's just a couple of sentences about what communion means to you. And after having read these pages, and of course what you've learned in church school and whatever, we hope that you will do a quick couple of sentences about that, right? Just with pencil and paper, no, no big blue book or anything. Um, and then this next page, is something will help it will start some family discussion up. And I think this could be interesting. I know it could be in our family. 
It's about sharing community experiences with parents and children. What do your parents remember about their first communion, their first communion experience, other family members? And again, if you have people from different traditions in your family, this could be interesting to learn about. Uh, I know when I was growing up, I didn't take communion until I was confirmed in eighth grade because that's when it was done. So my first communion was actually with my confirmation. And that was the way it was done back in 1960, whatever. Uh, so in, I invite you and your family to sit down and have a chat at dinner time or whatever with some of these questions or call up grandma and grandpa and uh, see what they might have to contribute. I think you'll, uh, you'll enjoy this. It also reminds you uh, on this page that um, as your child uh, completes this booklet and takes uh, his or her first communion time, we encourage you as a family to try to make worship part of your routine on communion weekend so that your child gets to reinforce his, experience, his or her experience uh, over the years. In church school, we've worked hard to help you out with this um, through the magic of technology, uh, meaning cell phones, we've had sneaky texts come to us to let us know when the service is uh, at the point of communion. And we were able to get the children back to the sanctuary or to Fellowship Hall in order to sneak back in and take communion with their parents. And it's really worked out well this year and we intend to continue it. So we're doing our best to support you uh, and encourage you to have family communion time. Um, the next page is probably the hardest part and the most daunting page in the booklet. It's a chart and it compares the Last Supper time of Jesus' life as reported in each of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And your job is to answer the question on the side based on the experience in each Gospel. Just like it would be different if my husband and I went to a party and you ask me later, how was the party? I might say, oh, wow, there were all these people there and we played some new games and somebody had a, opened up the pool and we were able to play. If you ask my husband, how was the party? He might talk about, oh, they had really great food. There was good salads and cakes and wow, somebody put a, a bunch of ribs on the grill. So same party, two different reports. One was about the food and one was about the people. Same thing in our Gospels. Each one tells the story of Jesus' time here on earth with us, but each one's a little different. So we're asking you to look up the verses in each Gospel, talking about the Last Supper, and then answering the questions. No worries, some of the questions are filled in for you, three or four of them, and you can see some of them are one answer and some of them are sentences. It's just whatever the answer is. At the bottom are special directions. Uh, if you're a fifth grader, lucky you, you get to do all the Gospels. If you're a fourth grader, you get to do Matthew, Mark, and John. Mom and Dad get to do Luke and then talk about it with you and compare and contrast them together. If you're a third grader, you get to do Mark and John and Mom does Matthew and Luke and you get to compare them. So the older you are, the more you have to do. You want to be sure to um, work this page carefully because this page will help you answer the rest of the booklet. These questions that go in um, these spaces here, the, the narrative of the story, having read the, the part ahead of it will help you fill that in. Filling this in will help you find the word search Doing the word search will help you find the crossword answers. They're all kind of connected. And those last parts are pretty self-explanatory. Um, in the fill in the blank thing, we have put the verses underneath for most of them to help you find them. Uh, no worries about different versions of the Bible, as you all know that they might be somewhat different. And of course, the uh, puzzles are typical for your age group. You'll all, I'm sure, enjoy those. You'll probably do a better job on this one than I would. Um, I encourage you and your family to enjoy the time together that you have to work on this. It's pretty, um, it's intended to be done at home and it's not the kind of thing that's 
well done when you're waiting till the last minute, I will say, as both a mom and a teacher. It's not an overwhelming amount of work, but if you wait until the night before, it will not make for a pleasant experience. If you kind of take your time and work through it slowly over the days uh, we've got here, I think you'll find that it goes through pretty quickly. Um, I hope you enjoy your time together working in it and it opens up some, some questions and answers for you. If you have any trouble with any part of it at all, any questions, <laughs> give Mr. Michael a holler and he can either uh, connect you with one of our uh, people on Children's Commission who will be glad to call and chat with you about any part of it at all. We're all very, if it was normal times, we would tell you to bring it into church school or AIM club and we'll sit down with you and give you a hand. But since we're dealing things with things like emails and telephone calls and whatever, just give Mr. Michael a holler and he'll connect you with one of us and we'll be glad to help you out. No problem at all. And be on the lookout on your emails for Mr. Michael's guidance in terms of timing on this. I don't know any more than you do about when we'll be able to be back together again. Frankly, I can't wait, um, but at some point we'll be getting those dates uh, lined up. Thanks a lot for paying attention and enjoy your time with the booklet and congratulations again for taking this little step of faith. Um, I am so proud of all of you if you wanted to do it. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you so much, Miss Jane, for taking the time to walk us through the packet step by step. So grateful for that. And I hope, families, that uh, this gives you just a little better sense of direction, a little idea of what the process looks like and where you're heading as you dive into this together. And we want you to know that as you do, we are here for you. You all have my information please don't hesitate to reach out to me at any time or for any reason. I'm happy to answer any questions at all that I can for you. And um, so please, at any time, don't hesitate to reach out. But we talked earlier about the fact that this is a strange time in which we're living. And um, this would normally be the time of the meeting where we would talk about next steps. But unfortunately, we just don't have really any idea when those um, next steps are going to occur, when the kids will meet with members of the commission and some members of our session kind of in groups to, to look at the packets together. Um, and that will occur. Um, we just don't know when it will occur. And that's okay. So that just means that we have more time to, to jump into the packet and to be able to take our time and really enjoy the process together. Um, and, and as things become more clear as to when these next steps might occur, uh, we will be sure to let you know well in advance. I promise it won't, it won't sneak up on you. Well, I do want to close our time together like we would if we were in the same room, and that's in prayer. So, friends, will you pray with me? Dear God, I give you thanks for these families. I give you thanks for the decision they've made the commitment they've made to jump into this exciting process together. And it is exciting, Lord, as we prepare to welcome um, all of these new friends to your table for the first time. Lord, I ask first for the kids that you will bless them in this process, that you will open their eyes as they spend time in your word to, to a better clarity of who you are and just how much they are loved by you, Lord. May they enjoy every step of this process. May it not be work, but may it be a joy as they spend time with you. And for the families, Lord, for our parents, along with our children, Lord, may this time together be a real joy. May it be a time to um, set aside the rest of the distractions that, that we all face on a daily basis and to spend time together in your word, learning more about you together and learning more about one another. Lord, bless these families in each step of this process. Be with them every step of the way. And we ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, we will be in touch soon. In the meantime, friends, as I said one more time, don't hesitate to reach out for anything at all. 
Be blessed in this process. Stay well and stay healthy. And we will be in touch soon. Take care. Bye-bye.